the one thing that is paramount that must happen for a woman to access her goddess energy is she has to defeat her shadow man. It's dark as obsidian And it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun The salt of the earth Fire burning and water dripping How could they be using goddess of magic? She is timeless The pillow that doesn't need a plug She is the wildest woman and let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew. But returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well go ahead on and subscribe. And before you blink, share this link. All right, all right, all right. This is the Goddess Energy episode of The Wireless Woman. And you know it's time to call the roll. I need all of my beautiful black queens to the front of the class for read aloud. All right, good people. So today we are going to be talking about divine feminine energy and the divine feminine. So a year ago when I started on my femininity journey, I had no idea, one, what femininity was or what the value of it was. And a lot of the intrinsic value of a woman is wrapped up in the feminine energy. So any woman who is able to actually access her feminine energy and is operating in feminine energy is going to manifest one of three different kinds of feminine energy. You have princess energy, queen energy, and goddess energy. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what each of those three things are, but I am going to do a femininity series that's going to break these energy levels down so that we can get a better understanding of it and how we need to use it, when we need to use it, and why we need to use it. Princess energy is a very low grade feminine energy. It is the woman who uses her feminine wiles to get what she wants. She has very short-sighted motives for her feminine energy. Generally, princess energy will pull a prince. These are people that don't have any responsibility for their kingdom. Whatever is coming to them is gonna be given to them or potentially left to them. More often than not, a princess would not necessarily be in the line of succession to become queen. Most princesses that become queens marry into queenhood. There is the occasional time when there isn't a male heir and a princess can potentially become a queen. However, she'll still need to level up her energy. The life of a princess doesn't necessarily prepare her for queenship. So princess energy is a very low grade, self-seeking feminine energy. Princess energy is the energy of a daughter towards a man, not really the energy of an equal. Princess energy is not really the energy that can match king energy. You know, um, if a king picks a princess, he's, he's going to regret that. He's going to feel the separation between their levels of responsibility and energy instantly. Instantly. The princess energy doesn't have any accountability built into it because princess energy is something that a woman is born into by virtue of the position of her father put 
potentially mother, um, but it's not really anything that she has to work to attain or maintain. The next level of feminine energy is queen energy. And in this energy, a woman would be responsible for a queendom. It's a passive aggressive energy. It is an energy that can initiate action or can be diplomatic and wait on answers to arrive. Queen energy is something that we'll talk about in much, much, much greater lengths. That's kind of where I am in my journey. But the very next level of feminine energy is goddess energy. <laughs> Goddess energy basically transcends that woman's struggle. It doesn't have any struggle in it. It's when you get to a place where you are in your manifest destiny, where the queen energy is a very regal, authoritative energy. The goddess energy is ethereal. It's the ability to it's the ability to reach into the spiritual realm and access spiritual resources in order to manifest tangible blessings in this realm, in the natural realm. Goddess energy is the highest evolution of the divine feminine energy. And it is a very real thing. A lot of people think you got to be into like crystals and voodoo and incense and weird things in order to access goddess energy. But it's not like this witchcraft thing. You actually see it in the Bible a lot. The Bible talks about how in the beginning, God said to his counsel, because God exists in relationship to himself. The Bible talks about the sons of God and you have the divine counsel. You know that you're dealing with cherubim and seraphim and a lot of heavenly government that's involved in creation. So in the beginning, God said to himself, those that were a part of the counsel of creating the earth and mankind, he said, hey, let us make man in our image. And when he made mankind, he made a man and a woman. So that says something in and of itself about the nature of God. And then God gave mankind a mandate. He gave them the authority and the dominion that they would need to carry that out. But the Bible says very implicitly that he gave them dominion, that the dominion would only work as a mechanism of their agreement. So goddess energy is also manifest when you see that God wants to bring his son into the earth and he uses the vessel of a woman in order to fulfill creation. Now, if God wanted to create his own son, why not just do what he did with Adam, get some dirt together, pack it in, blow on it, breathe on it, and just do it that way. But the divine feminine has always been a part of the creative processes of God. Now, the reason why this goddess energy and the divine feminine is so important at this time is I believe that we are moving into the age of the divine feminine, that femininity is becoming a spiritual and physical commodity that really cannot be denied. You know, the value of a woman is as much as we as women see our value being questioned, it's also being vied for. You know, we are truly competing against men for feminine energy on a wide scale basis more than we ever have before. So just like in the original creation story with Adam, the man came first. There is a preeminence to masculine energy, the divine masculine and manhood. But at a certain time when the man's work had been fulfilled, the woman was revealed. She was brought out of him from his rib. We see the same characterization when Jesus is pierced in his side and out comes rivers of water and blood. We know that his crucifixion signifies the revelation of the church, that the church is his bride. There is no divine masculinity displayed in the Bible without a feminine counterpart. You know, God chose Mary to mother his child. Jesus chose the church as his bride. Adam also likewise had a bride and God says several times throughout scripture that it is not good for man to be alone. So even with the preeminence of the divine masculine, eventually a feminine element has to be revealed to bring balance to that in order to, in order to restore dominion 
and authority. The divine masculine has to operate in balanced concert with divine femininity. So I didn't necessarily want to start a YouTube channel. I went on a retreat by myself. Y'all know a lot about my wireless woman journey. So during my year off the grid, I took time to go and spend time with God in the mountains. And that's when he told me I had to come back and start this channel. And I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't really know what my voice was going to be about. I thought I would talk about nature and going off of the grid and unplugging from technology, which I fully intend to. But I really began to have a bleeding heart for my people and for my culture and for black people and really began to see an exodus that was coming for us as a people, just like the Hebrew people under the tyranny of Pharaoh. I just feel like there is some insidious element to how to how the culture is currently being viewed and characterized and treated under this system. And I began to really see liberated black people as being the way, the truth and the life for people that are seeking freedom from the oppression of this capitalistic system and this government. But as I began to do this channel and really begin to continue to seek the face of God on what the direction would be, he began to talk to me about this feminine energy journey that I was on and the power of the divine feminine. And as I, as I define my audience for this channel, it refines my voice. And I'm starting to really realize that it is women, that it is particularly black women and children that are going to lead the way. The Bible says that in the last days, he will pour out his spirit on all flesh and that sons and daughters would prophesy that a lion would lay down with a lamb and the child would lead them. And so I believe that God has always chosen the weak things, the foolish things of man in order to shame wise people. When I have searched scripture in the past, I see the, the men, the great and mighty men of God, the mighty prophets and judges, Samson and Samuel, Peter and John and Paul and all these people that laid hands and healed the lame and the sick and cast out devils. And you really don't see that element of femininity. Other than Esther, Ruth, Deborah, Mary, you see the woman at the well, Rahab, they're like these secondary characters that assist men in their journey to serve God. But God talks in Isaiah when he says, behold, I do a new thing. And there are a lot of people in the time of Christ that weren't willing to accept that a new testament of God was coming forth. They weren't willing to accept John's witness that he was in the wilderness preparing a way that would be a new way. When, when Jesus began to talk about God as his father, as his Abba, as his daddy, the Pharisees were like, no, we don't do that. You know, God is God. He's up here. He's holy. We can't touch him. He doesn't, you know, you can't heal on the Sabbath. You can't be in the synagogue. You can't tear the temple down in three days and rebuild it. And Jesus came in and radicalized that era and that culture by being so radical. And I believe that we are in a dispensation of the divine feminine where God is going to begin to use women in a way that we've never seen before, that it's going to be a new testament, that women are going to put their hands on the sick and heal them, that we're going to see miracles being done by the hands of women of biblical proportions, that there's going to have to be a whole new testament written about what women are getting ready to do in this country and in this world. Like, don't ask me why I believe that, because I believe it in a place and in a way that I can't explain. And I can't explain everything that I've seen right now in this context. There's an education that needs to be given. Just like Ezekiel sat in the square eating his food over dung, over poop to show people what God was going to be doing. Just like God put Jonah in the belly of a whale, just like God told Noah to build an ark before rain ever came. I can't explain to you what's coming or what's happening. I can only prepare you for it. I can only be what God showed me. He wants to see this generation of women do and be. And women, we are going to have to become 
divinely feminine. We are going to have to access God's energy and believe certain things about who we are and what God has created us to do for this time. We have to get prepared. We have to get prepared to go to war in order to express the image of God. You go in these churches and the people that are left in the pews are women. Women who can't even get their children to go serve God anymore. You know, I believe that God put a favor on black men to liberate their people and the job was not done. And yes, there are many reasons why, but ultimately we're not seeing the divine masculine energy that manifests industry and institution, the type of energy that God gave our men in the 60s and the 70s to take over. They've compromised. They've been compromised just like Eve was in the garden. They have been given fruit that they would rather eat to blind their eyes. And we can't go along with them. Just like Adam went along with Eve in the beginning and caused a fall, we cannot go along with them. And here's the thing, you're hearing it come out the spirit realm. They're saying, women, you need to be accountable. You need to be accountable. You need to be accountable to God, not fallen men who are not accountable to God. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to grow our own food. We're going to take care of our children. We're going to manifest the rest that we need to be walking in in order to operate in the spiritual realm and to resist struggle and strife. That's what we're going to do. We're going to get quiet. We're going to take time to ourselves. We're going to recharge our bodies and minds and spirits like we recharge these crystals and waist beads that we want to wear. We're going to be light in this world of darkness and we are not going to compromise. We're going to do better and choose better. We're not going to try anymore. We're going to be. We're going to be the change that we want to see. We're going to be what this nation needs from us. And we're going to be it like, like no one else is responsible for it but us. We're going to continue to get degrees and lead industries. And we're going to do it by the Spirit of God. We're going to continue to pray for the sick, lay hands on the lame. We're going to do what we've always done, but now we're going to do it understanding that we're chosen, understanding that we're being set apart, that we're being called out for a reason. Just like it says in Habakkuk 2, the vision is for an appointed time. And we're here at a time where we're in the age of Aquarius. And, and the last time we were in the age of Aquarius, it was the 60s and the 70s when you saw all that social change and social unrest. And we are in another age of Aquarius, but this one hasn't occurred for 800 years. You have to also know the signs and the times in order to manifest the will of God. God is outside of time, but he works through times and seasons in order to accomplish his purpose in a certain way. We are going to have to fight to defend femininity at this point. And not because we not because we want to fight people for it, but because it's only going to work when we use it. You know? They're trying to drain us of our energy. It's like a Drake song. I got enemies, got a lot of enemies, got a lot of people trying to drain me of my energy. Like it's facts. That's literally where we are right now. The time for manifestation of blessing like we've never seen is coming, but it's coming to us. I hate to be the bearer of this news. I mean, it, it couldn't have felt good to Pharaoh to know that God was choosing the Hebrews and going to make a mockery of his nation for the sake of liberating his people. But it is what it is. Like women are the ones that have been chosen for this time. I'm here as a messenger of the message I was given. And in times past, Prophets have been stoned, thrown in jail, beheaded for saying things that God told them. And when I spent my year off the grid, I did my own shadow work. The one thing that is paramount that must happen for a woman to access her goddess energy is she has to defeat her shadow man. 
As long as you have darkness in you, as long as you have doubt in you about what God has called you to do, about your identity and who you are, as long as you shadow boxing with yourself, you'll never be able to accomplish anything great. And you will not ever be able to express the image of God. And I want to see each one of us be positioned for what God is ready to do through us when the time comes. And we can't do that if we're caught up in low vibrational energy. We can't do that if we're arguing and fighting and striving with men for a femininity that really isn't benefiting them. So ladies, let's go ahead and access that energy. Let's go ahead and charge up. Let's mount up like regulators and get ready for what has to be done. This is what the tribal is about. This is what this channel is about. I had to make a decision that I was going to be female first, even before being black, even before being concerned about the liberation of my whole entire community. I have been placed here in this season at this time to prepare people who look like me. You know, it was people that looked like me, people that were taken from the dirt and the mud, who created every other race and phenotype of people. The black woman is God. The black woman is the mother of God in, in saying that she's the mother of Jesus. Like I'm not being heretical. And if you think I am, I don't care. Every person we see in this earth came through a black woman. Dominion was given to the black woman in the beginning. She was created out of a man that came out of the ground. What color is dirt? And we as brown people were given the earth to be stewards over it. And we're watching people that don't look like us merchandise the earth, sell land, you know, destroy the environment. We, we are honestly going to hell for what we've done to animals, to the animal kingdom, to how we kill and murder and, and hoard these animals for food. When food grows freely up from the ground, there is a reckoning that's coming. And if brown people don't get back in place, the type of people who understand community, who understand that we need to share with each other, that there is enough out here for everybody. The people that aren't trying to capitalize on other people, the people that haven't gone from country to country to country making colonies and, and empires. We need brown people at the helm making decisions on how we move forward out of oppression into liberation for all people. The type of liberation that black people need, white people need it too. The type of liberation that women need, men need it too. Aren't you tired? I mean, men, y'all getting finessed out here. Even the ones that are making money and rich. Jeff Bezos' wife left. Bill Gates' wife left. I mean, <laughs> y'all are getting finessed by these women. You're going to have to treat women like they count and like they matter in this earth or else we take in half anyway these women are taking half anyway look at the jordan divorce so you can either have it taken or you can share it white people you can share it with black people or you're going to end up losing it because y'all rich white people are on the moon figuring out an exit strategy to get off this planet because they know something you don't know. And you don't have to believe me, but I've already seen it. And when the time is right, I will tell you about it. But yeah, it's time to go ahead and access the divine feminine. That's the only thing that's going to balance out the energy and give us the time that we need to get ready for judgment. So... Like I always say, it's time to unplug. It's time to be unbothered about what's going on on this dirty, dusty ass planet. And it's time to get unleashed. It's time to take and prepare for what's ours. So as always, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman. Please like, comment, and subscribe on this channel. A couple of announcements. I do have a backup channel. It's Debbie and 
Nikki. I am going to be doing some shell reviews and different content on that channel. Feel free to go and subscribe. In the meantime, though, I will see you back here for another one. Until then, class is now dismissed.